Hello, and welcome to the Schooner Simulation. I'm your host, Michael Whitman, and today's episode is sponsored by Raycon. Get 15% off when you use code TPPN15 at checkout. Undefeated and unperturbed, the Sooners look to take down an anemic Nebraska team on their home turf in this Week 3 matchup. For those that are new, we'll be watching the gameplay out in NCAA Football 14 with the AI on Heisman-level difficulty and analyzing that gameplay footage. The updated rosters courtesy of the Operation Sports Forum ensure our teams are up to date and the college football revamped modification makes them look their best. Check out links to both in the description below. After doing some research from this sim onward, we'll be using a custom fusion of Zocrates' as real as it gets CPU versus CPU sliders, as well as the penalty settings from JKIT's NCAA football sliders, both courtesy of the Operation Sports Forums. Games will now be played with 8 minute quarters instead of 5. I feel like it's time for the specialty kits, so we'll have both teams in their throwback jerseys, Oklahoma in white, while Nebraska goes full red. According to the Schooner Weather Composite, this game will be a dreary one. Expect overcast to light rain with a temperature of 78 degrees, an 11 mile an hour wind, and around 60% humidity at the 11 a.m. kickoff. Looking at some of the Super Sims I ran, OU seems to have the advantage in this one. Let's see exactly how. OU takes offense first and starts efficiently. Execution is done well and ball protection seems to be a priority, and a lack of big plays or feats of athleticism make for a slow and steady pace down the field. The familiar back and forth between 20-yard gains and sacks do occur, but much more sparsely in between smaller 2- or 3-yard gains. Our running core sees great utilization and success at pushing us down the field and consistently go for double-digit yardage. Gray and Major are once again splitting duties and made it a competition. I certainly won't complain, especially when it means our wideouts can find some freedom down the field when we really need it. Our O-line, for the most part, did what they needed to to make sure the pocket had time and space to operate. Dylan Gabriel didn't seem too confident in some of his throws, but you wouldn't be able to tell that by looking at the stats. Sometimes he has all day to make a throw and still finds a way to get sacked, while others he's quick to find an open man and rifles it to him for 20 plus yard gains. With all this considered, the offense's consistency in its production week over week is a good thing and hopefully reflects in real life. Our defense comes out and it's obvious the defensive line didn't study their opponent. They seem to stall themselves on the line rather than attack the ball like we've seen in weeks past. This gives Casey Thompson and Anthony Grant some well-needed time in the backfield to read enough of our defense to ensure they've rarely lost yardage. Surprisingly, it was our secondary and safeties who shined brightly this time around, crashing on runs to make up for issues plugging holes and making it difficult for the Husker wideouts to find space. This prevented Casey Thompson's arm from being a threat. Nevertheless, the defense couldn't quite figure out Nebraska's ground game, and this kept the matchup much closer than I think any Sooner fan would like. When they needed to step up, though, the entirety of the defense came together to break up third and some fourth down conversions to keep the Huskers' hopes of victory cleanly out of reach. OU walks away with a win in Lincoln, 27-14. We do have to keep in mind that NCAA 14 still considers OU and Nebraska a rivalry game, and it's well known the game likes to add some weirdness to spice up the gameplay. Random penalties and fumbles, out of place plays and actions, and sudden momentum changes are all things that get added in for kicks. While I can turn some settings off for things like home field advantage, the rest we simply need to take with a grain of salt. Given the recent firing of Scott Frost off horrid performances against FCS and G5 opponents, I'd say Nebraska's real opponent is the spread, not the Sooners. But stranger things have happened, and maybe Mickey Joseph is the change their program needs. What the Sooners need is for Dylan Gabriel to show up confidently prepared and for the D-line to keep up the heat they've been bringing every game so far. Do that, and the turmoil-ridden Huskers will shuck off before we know it. Thank you all for watching, and be sure to tune in to the Schooner Pod to keep up to date on all things Oklahoma football.